welcome to the Happy Ramp Podcast. I am Ted Cluck, joined as always in studio by my good friends Barnabas Piper and Ronald J. Martin. And boys, the next time we do this, we will be together. We will be uh, at Indianapolis at the Soma Church and Day Spa uh, taping Indie Live, which is very exciting. Uh, it's our first time in that city. Uh, we get to feel the warm embrace of, uh, of Indianapolis, of the Midwest, I'm sure. Uh, there are events in the works, and that town is is just getting ready for the onslaught of of kind of extra tourist activity and welcoming us with open arms. So, boys, are you uh, are you looking forward to Indie Live? Need you ask? Yeah, I guess not, man. I, I'll I'll take by your by your silence that you are looking forward to it. Sorry, I was I, I was yeah, I was going to say I was buried in in actual show prep for it and thinking oh, about exactly. all of the ways that we could make it the greatest. Especially also realizing that this episode will air after that event. So, That's you know, true. That's looking true. forward, looking backward, it's all very confusing. Exactly. It's good radio is what it is, boys. Piper, we have a sponsor today, don't we? And we have we a do. great sponsor, one that we're actually excited to talk about. So, That's why don't we talk? That's right. About much it? much more than our actual event. We are excited about the Dwell Bible app. They've sponsored a couple previous episodes. They'll sponsor sponsor a couple more, so you get more chances to hear about it. Um, if you haven't listened previously, Dwell is an audio Bible app. So for those who maybe struggle to have be in the habit of reading Scripture, or maybe you just kind of you get lost when you sit down to try to look at a page, and it's just not a way that it connects with you. Audio Bibles are a really great way to fit it into your day because you're driving somewhere, you're working out, you're doing dishes, you're mowing the lawn, you're doing just day-to-day normal things, you can pop in some earbuds and actually listen to it. But what's really cool about uh, what Dwell does is that they have listening plans. So it's not just, it's not a, it's not a thing that puts all the pressure on you to figure out where to start, how to get into this. You can go find one that's, that's sort of, it's thematic. It goes through book by book. It follows some other Bible reading plans that, uh, that people use like the Robert Murray McShane plan or different ones like that. Um, And, if you spend 15 to 20 minutes a day listening, uh, especially if you're just listening at normal pace, you can, you can speed it up and do like one and a half pace like some people do, you can get through the whole Bible in a year, which is it's actually pretty hard to do that if you're reading. It's doable, but it's a challenge. But 15 to 20 minutes a day listening, most of us do that anyway if we're podcast or audiobook listeners. They also have background music if you want that. They have different readers' voices. So you can kind of create a uh, the experience that connects you with Scripture the best. So what you need to do is go to dwellapp.io slash happyrant, where you can get uh, a 33% discount off their annual subscription, which comes out to just $19.99 a year. So that's really inexpensive. It's not, uh, it's not, a, it's not a high price thing that... You know, and or you're not like getting in at an entry level and then getting ambushed later. So it's nineteen ninety nine a year, and again, that's dwellapp.io slash happy rant. Um, and if you're not totally sure you want to check it out, they have a seven day free trial where you can you can see what the experience is, check out the check out the different uh, listening plans, the different versions, the different music readers, all that stuff. See, find the one that works for you, and then jump in at that discount. So again, it's dwellapp.io slash happy rant. Check it out. Piper, nicely done. Also, Dwell App people, if you're listening, and I know you are, we are available for voice work. Oh, oh uh, guess what we just heard from today? Sorry. What, baby? I'm burying what do you got? the lead. Breaking news? We heard from one of the Dwell App developers who has said, guys, please send in your audition reels. So, yes. Jeff McFadden. Wow. Wow. Jeff and Dwell App has said, "Send over your audition reels, and we we will see what we can do." Jeffrey, now what does he want on that reel, Piper? In that, I'm I'm you know I don't want to be presumptuous here, but uh, we've been doing the show for how long? Five years. So yeah, like there, there's take, a little bit of an take archive half a of a decade. Yeah, yeah. There, there's an archive of of our voices, you know, being recorded out there. So what what would Jeffrey like to see beyond the five years worth of episodes that we've done? Does he want like us reading a little section of scripture, probably? I have a suspicion that he might also want audio quality that's better than like tin can and a string. <laughs> you know, just well, may, maybe, uh, you know, like going in a room where it doesn't echo so much or things that yeah. we normally pay no attention to whatsoever. Um, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I suppose we could actually try reading scripture. You could try it in different different like versions of yourself. So you could sure, do you know, like, excited Ted. You could do like granola bar eating Ted. 
We could mm. Ronnie could do like Ronnie trying to talk about sports. Ronnie or like Ronnie that would be dis- silent Ronnie. Well, yes, that one's <laughs> that, that's a whole different you version. Could, you could do protest Ronnie. It's just like 20 minutes <laughs> of silence. <laughs> protest Ronnie. Uh, my favorite version is, is Ronnie being dismissive of, um, Ronnie being dismissive of music. He thinks is trite Ronnie. So when he just, oh, is, that's good. Mm. he's sort of, Ronnie he's sort well. of like, he, he's sort mm. of snotty Ronnie. Um, what that's about my- shopping for a cabin Ronnie? Is that up there? Pipe? That's, that's very similar to protest Ronnie. Although, Boys, Ronnie, I'm right here. Ronnie reveling in cabins. Ronnie would make a great reading voice because there's just so much, so much enthusiasm. I would like for the the app to have an option where, yeah, listeners can choose their favorite their favorite version of what we've just laid out. So, uh, boys, I know what I'm going to be doing for the next week until we hit Indie Live. I'm going to be perfecting my audition tape. <laughs> um, very excited about this development. Now, Piper, I don't want to I don't want to get into the like nuts and bolts of the business here, but is there a good buck in this kind of voice work? Like if, if the dwell app were to hire us to do voice work, would we get a piece of the action or would we get like uh, just a flat rate? What does that look like? That's a really good question. I mean, how much money is there in Bible reading? I mean, it's, is this, yeah. is this the industry we want to like, are we trying to corner the market on this? What, uh, what's, what's the goal here? I know that if you read audiobooks, you can make, you know, I mean, it, for contract work, it's not bad. I've only okay. read my own, but I've I have heard tell that you can make decent money reading other people's. Well, here we go, boys. Consider this uh, another revenue stream for the Happy Rant. Um, I would like, I mean, for those books of the Bible where there's like multiple characters, maybe we could get all three of us in the studio at the same time to to kind of do one of these multiple character books. Yeah, what uh, um, what Bible story should would we? Maybe like the prodigal son, because there's like three main characters. There's there's yeah. the father and the younger and older brothers. I feel like we could pull that one off well. Yeah, I feel like that would translate well. That which of us is do. which? Ooh, interesting, interesting question, Pipe. Um, Ron, I want your thoughts on this. I feel like you're going into protest mode because Dude, you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Ron's a man of the cloth. Ron's been to seminary and we haven't, Piper. <laughs> so he should he should exegete who plays who in the in the parable of the prodigal son. Guys, let me exegete you guys. Let me exegete each other here for a minute. Let's let's do it, baby. I don't know. I think I would like um uh, you know, does the father the father really has doesn't have a lot of dialogue though, does he? Not, well, maybe the person who who is the narrator could also do the father's voice, and you just have to modulate your voice a little bit because there is sort of there's like a third person description to it. You know, the father did this, the son yeah. did that, that kind of. Okay, thing. I want to. I want. I want Big T to be the prodigal. I want to okay, be the father. That makes sense. And I want Pipe to be the smug elder brother. <laughs> I love it, dude. I'm I I'm well it. equipped for smugness. I've got it. Yeah. I've got it on my Did I just I nail we, it, boys? Are we comfortable? I think with we've those nailed two? it. Yeah, I'm Ron. That's why. I'm that's why you're a pastor. That's why you're the man of the cloth and we're not. That is the reason. Because I can choose who fits the best voiceover for when we read The Prodigal Son. You know, we should do this at Indie Live. Let's read The Prodigal Son live at Indie Live and do the voices. Adding it it to the show notes document right now. That's creative radio, baby, is what that That, is. Baby, that is creative radio. And you know what? You're using that seminary education, and I I like that. I am. I mean, certain people say that's not useful. I disagree. Yeah, man, all the money. When that's all right. the dollars have been spent, baby, when all the money. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You take away all the money that you spent on that seminary degree. And what you got left is three guys reading the prodigal son live. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh, baby, that's going to be good radio. I look forward to that. Uh, boys, speaking of good radio, we have some radio to do today. And, and you know, I hate to I hate to take things to a sad level. And I, I hate to do this for our first topic, but I feel like a eulogy is in order. And um, who better to eulogize the Babylon Bee than, than us on this program? Because I feel like um, it passed away. Uh, the Babylon Bee passed away a few months ago. Um, I understand, Piper, and you'll have to assess out the business uh, aspects of this. I understand there was a sale of the website. And the website, the Babylon Bee that used to be funny, is now no longer funny. And um, Which, it's to probably be clear, on the- is what we mean by passed away. The URL yeah. is still live. They're still putting yeah. words up on their website. It's just it's probably that, on the death rattle, though, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, you, it's like a months? zombie website at this point in terms of like it's there's a body moving around, but it's not really alive. And it's mostly just sucking people's brains. Exactly. Uh, so, Piper, what happened? What was the what was the business thing that happened that that sent uh, the Babylon Bee into such a downward spiral? Yeah. In this episode of Happy Rant Business Insider, let me go. Let me go behind the scenes. Um, the the founder and former owner was a guy named Adam Ford, 
who sold the website. It's actually been a decent while. It's been several months, maybe a year. I don't remember. Um, because I... Th- I think he just ran into a lot of trouble with sort of when you have a high profile site in the religious realm, he was running into issues with like Facebook suppressing content and different kinds Mm -hmm. of things and felt it was time to move on. So he sold it to people. I don't know who he sold it to, but people less funny than himself. Um, He had what, what we all agree, I think was a pretty keen sense of how to do Christian satire. You know, it was, it was, it, w- it had some teeth to it, but it wasn't really mean spirited. He understood like the really quirky weirdness of evangelical culture and could draw that out in these great articles. He could find contributors who who could do that very well, also. And so the site was just consistently really funny. Yeah. Now it is basically an aggressive, right leaning, just sort of. It feels like people pointing and laughing as opposed to making like witty jokes. So it's a lot of just sort of like O'Doyle rules in Christian humor is sort of what it feels like now. (laughs) Nice. So it even the headlines aren't funny anymore. You know, it's like pastor preaches bad sermon. Ha ha ha. You know, like that's that's not actually a joke. That's just yeah. That's the thing that happens. And so you know, we miss Adam Ford. We miss the old version. But yeah, it's it. Man, is it falling off a cliff? Dude, so I, I think the Adam Ford version is is the outlier for sure because I I honestly for most of my lifetime didn't think Christians being funny could even be a thing. You know what I mean? I, I thought it was such a that, that's like going to the moon. You know, it, it happens so so infrequently. It's it's just barely a thing at all. Well, Ronnie, um, you better cancel that Christian comedian for your big Easter fest at church this year. Todd <laughs> <laughs> yeah. totally. Ted just said it wasn't going to work. What, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, boy, trust my instincts. You know, when, when it comes to making money and being successful, I've, I've got the corner on that. But Big R, um, but put a put a fine point on this. You're a man of the cloth. Uh, you <coughs> probably do funerals for work. Um, let's eulogize the Babylon Bee, baby. Put a put put a bow on this thing for us. OK. Yeah, there was just I mean, to me, the the old the early dude. I mean, he definitely was a student of, of like satire sites like The Onion. And so obviously that's what he was taking his page from, but he did it really well. And it was clever. It like, he didn't overdo anything. Um, so there was like a subtlety to it. Um, which I, again, to me, all good humor is subtle. Everything wasn't so just blatant, but I think what pipe said is true. I mean, this thing is just, it's like, it's kind of, it, it feels like it's now coming from this like preachy, right, you know, extreme right wing angle, you know, um, you know, like like for instance, right here, here's an example. You know, evangelicals relieved their present now only guilty of paying off porn stars and models. You know what I mean? It's like so it's always that thing where it's like it's just it's like stating it just all it does is states the obvious now rather than like coming up with these really creative kind of like really satirical, funny angles on, you know, evangelicalism, which is what the other guy did. So, man, it's just I don't know. It's something that was cool. It was something that was fun to see pop up on social media. And, um, you know, something you used to be able to share between friends and go, oh, my gosh, did you see that one? Did you see the bee today? That was so funny. And now it's just it's kind of lost that um, it's kind of lost that sense of, uh, I think, unique. Yeah, I mean, when, when I, I'm looking at their I'm looking at their front page now and let's see, there's there's like 47 political posts. It's all. Political. Oh, no, wait, it's all political posts. There's, yeah, it's all political. Uh, there's one article that says something like seven replacement swears for true Christian. First of all, if you call cuss words or swear words swears, you were clearly homeschooled because that's not what normal <laughs> people call them. Um, that's very true. You, you can call them profanity. You can call them any number of things, but swears <laughs> is what like nine-year-old homeschool kids call cuss words. Um, mm. But they used to do articles. like They had, had one a whole article about how my dad uses hyphenated words. You know, so okay. like, and, and, you know, cause that, that was sort of his thing, you know, there was, there was like blood earnest, blah, 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 all these different things he would use. And so they would draw on like these subtle nuances of quirky, famous Christians that were not, they, they weren't insulting at all. They just were yeah. funny. And this is just like, this is, this is just, it's not full. First of all, it's not funny. And second of all, it's like, I don't even know if it's Christian. It's just newsy. 
Well, because the original Babylon, the re, the brilliance of the original B was that it was laughing at itself. It's kind of yeah. like what we do a little bit where we're just like we're clearly in the tribe that we're constantly making fun of and laughing. So we're laughing at ourselves through all of this as well. And like they like they st- it just stopped laughing at itself, which to me, all good humor is is the ability to, uh, you know, to not take yourself so seriously. And this actually feels like there's this weird with this weirdo, like we we're trying to get across a message bent to it now. Mm. And, Interesting. You know, and and of course we liked it before because it, it was probably once a month, maybe more, where we would we would do one of our bits on the podcast making fun of something goofy, and then they would do an article fairly close to the time, sometimes but just before, sometimes after, on almost the exact same joke. And then their owner would message us on Twitter or message me personally and just say, Hey, we didn't steal your bit. We just happened to notice the same goofy thing. And and I trust him. I don't mean I don't think he was stealing any jokes. He wasn't that guy. And so there was there was a very similar sensibility about how to poke fun at the group that we're part of in a way that that keeps it lighthearted, not you know destructive. Yeah, for real. Good point, Pipe. Boys, I want to transition us from something that's not funny to something that is still very much funny. Oh, and, good. Uh, we can't go any yeah. darker than farewell Babylon B. <laughs> what is funny is the Stronger Men's Conference. Um, the Stronger Men's Conference is coming up. It's in uh, April, April 26th and 27th of 2019. <laughs> um, and I'm looking at the website. So as you guys will recall, Stronger Men is, uh, is a Mark Driscoll production. And uh, it's the kind of conference where you might see some powerlifting. You might see some MMA cage fighting. Uh, you might see a, a lumberjack on stage, like cutting some stuff in half with a chainsaw. Um, that's the kind of thing, some bull riding. So, uh, we've got bull riding this year per the website. Um, it, the website says this, let me just lay some copy on you. The Friday night entertainment is a staple of the stronger men's conference. Over the past few years, we have had monster trucks, lumberjacks, and official MMA fights. We are pumped to announce that this year's entertainment will be bull riding. We, have, wow. we will have professional bull riders from around the country come and partici- participate in a world class show featuring premier bulls. None of those, none of those second class bulls. These are premier Dude. bulls. Dude, I would these never are, go to a conference without premier bulls. Never. These are premier bulls that we're gonna be lashing rope around the <laughs> testicles of and, and and then they're gonna they're gonna try to to, to to try to throw the rider off. These are these are the best kind of, of that kind of bull. Um, will, special- will Mark Driscoll ride a premier bull is the question. Oh, you it's the question it, that I, we've all wanted to know the answer to. I, I think it's inevitable that Driscoll's going to be on the back of one of these premier bulls. Is it not? I mean, do we even want to go to a conference where that doesn't happen? Um, so Stronger Men 2019 is happening. I, it's the kind of conference that will for sure feature a gray-haired old man wearing a, like a camouflage jacket. Um, it, it's, it's that and kind of thing. breaking so, news. It's not Louis Giglio this year. No, but it's a bunch of Louis Giglio S guys. Let me, let me run you down this speakers list because I don't know anybody in, in Christendom and you guys do. So I bet, I bet you guys know who these guys are. Um, okay. So the conference host is a gentleman named John Lindell. Do we know anything about John Lindell? Like how famous he is or what mega church he's the pastor of, et cetera. He's part of James River Church. I don't really know much oh, about yeah, that church. Oh, yeah, it's a huge Assemblies of God church. <clears throat> oh, interesting. Yeah. So we've got a we've got a charismatic at the so helm. So this, this is a charismatic fest, though, isn't it, Pipe? I think I think it is. Because isn't Drisky kind of charismatic now? Yeah. Like, I, I, don't I don't think he's kind of charismatic now. I think he's all yeah. the way charismatic now. He, put, he puts out books on charisma. Oh, yeah, that's Publishing. right. So. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so Lindell's going to be there. Lindell is an old man who dresses young. Um, I'm inferring that by the one photograph that I see of him here on the website. Uh, okay, next guy, Jeremy Foster. What do we What do we know about Jeremy? Well, based on his author bio, whether it's bull riding or politics, he is always <laughs> geared up with a vivid story that brilliantly captivates his audience and plants a seed of understanding. Well, dude, so, that's what I want. I it, want a Jeremy. guy who has a story handy about bull riding or politics. Like those are the two things I look for in a pastor. I, um, you know that that dude, sounds like my favorite guy to go hang out with too. I mean, dude, for what, real, man. What more He's, could we have in common? Nothing absolutely. more fun than hanging out with a guy that's worked with presidents, senators, governors, and others. Does, uh, do you really have to say and bulls. others? 
Yeah. Like, dude, like Jeremy, when you say president, senators, and governors, we're like assuming you've probably worked with other people. Like other people too. People who aren't <laughs> in the one of those three categories. People who aren't like famous and high up in the political spectrum. But like it's um it's amazing how much they're making about like his politics. Yeah. Right? Like it's just yeah. like this is a great thing that he's hanging out like in like in Like this is an amazing noble thing that this guy's been a part of. Politics. What could go wrong with that? You know? What could what could what could possibly go south? I know. I guess like in our tribe, we're like sensitive about that, right? You start talking about politics, we're like, uh oh, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Dude, not these guys. These guys are leaning into it. Now, what about I want you boys to look at the website. Do you have the capability in your studios to look at Dude, I'm the on. Story? I'm on right I'm on now. Right now. I'm I want you to you. I'm tracking. With I want you. you to parse like I, I just want you to deconstruct Drisky's photo on this uh on this site because you, there's there's the some stuff going on. Or in this the photo. screen grab of his little video preview. Dude, the photo, because I'm not looking at the screen grab, but I could easily do that, too. Um, talk, talk me through the photo, Piper. Like, what are you seeing there? Because to me, there's there's some interesting stuff going on in this photo. All right. Let me let me make sure I'm looking at the right one. OK, yes. So <clears throat> first of all, uh, it's he has he's tried to go clean cut with his hair. Yeah, because so, he's, he's got like the it's like the 45 degrees slicked back, but it's just a little thin. So it's yeah. got like a pseudo comb over thing happening. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have like the razor part, so he's not he's not going full old guy trying to look young, but yeah, a little more clean cut. Then he's got he's got that smile, you know, the mm-hmm. I just told a joke and you haven't quite caught it yet smile. Like I yeah. know I'm funny, but you don't yet realize I'm funny. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Keep um, going. And then, so he's wearing a he's wearing a dark color. It's a black and white photo, so it's hard to tell what color. Yeah. It's a dark colored blazer over a V neck T shirt. Yeah. But his neck is so big that it fills up the whole V, so it almost mm-hmm. looks like a crew neck T shirt, mm. which is that that's a unique capability he has. I don't have that capability. My neck is not so substantial. Um, and then, but but the the whole blazer over T shirt thing feels very. That actually feels a lot like what a Christian comedian would wear. Um, Interesting. So, but then I think the two most fascinating aspects to this photo are, first of all, his monstrous watch. Yeah, there's a lot of watch there. I yeah, was the, mention it that. looks like a watch. It looks like a diving watch. You know, like one of those ones that has the <laughs> uh, like the the little depth meter on it. It's like, oh, yeah. I hope you're gonna get the bends if you go up too fast. It's good down to like 200 feet. Yeah, you know, you can go to the bottom of the ocean with that thing. <laughs> you can you can <laughs> literally beat a great white shark with that thing. Um, exactly. But then the most fascinating thing is the like the glowing flames color treatment on his other hand. Because he's yeah. got his he's got his arms crossed, so the watch hand is kind of tucked under one arm. The other arm is 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 up on top, or the other hand is, and there's there's like a a Shekinah glory glow around it. Which is that is, the charismatic influence on this conference? Is that like supposed to stand in for the Holy Spirit? That Shekinah glory. Well, like, dude, color that's, I'm trying to up? figure out. Maybe or, I'm looking at a different shot because or, I'm looking no. at him in front of that. All that neon. It looks like he's standing in front of like it's a small world after all, or something like I think we, some so, Disneyland ride. I'm looking at the one just on the. Uh, on the home page. That's what I'm looking at. Page. Where it says right, special yeah. guests. And so, but, or, or it looks like the hand from the iron fist, you know, Marvel's really terrible Netflix show. Um, you know, where, where Danny Rand gets all geeked up and then he clenches his fist and it starts to glow orange and he can punch through anything. Uh, mm. so it's either Shekinah glory, Holy spirit, or it's his chi. I'm not sure yeah. which. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to say, Pipe. So I think I think Piper, or actually I think Drisky in this shot actually looks like, I think he looks like the Ohio State basketball coach. If you've watched much Ohio State men's basketball this season, Obviously. Piper. Um, yeah, well, you Ron, live in you Ohio, probably, Ron, so I would assume you're a diehard fan. It's that's, all I that's watch. That's my boys. assumption. It shouldn't even be a question. Why are we even talking about that? Not a question. Exactly. Anyway, Drisky looks like that. Um we we do have the uh, the Shekinah glory effects around the fist there, which I, w- I would love. Maybe we have some charismatic listeners who can shed some light on that. Maybe if you're charismatic, that's just like that happens in all your photographs. Um, I don't know. I couldn't speak to that. My my favorite thing about this website, Piper, and uh, I, I wonder if you can guess what my favorite thing is. Uh, the people they call NFL superstars. Yes, the fact that they have a fullback and he's referred to as an NFL superstar. <laughs> I love and, this. And literally nobody outside of the Kansas City Chiefs. Maybe everybody's heard of Anthony Sherman. Yeah, Tony the Kansas yeah. City Chiefs practice squad 
might recognize this guy. Nobody else knows who he Guys, is. Guys, Tony Sherman, Sherman is, a is a he's a lovely he's a household man. Thing. Yeah, he's a lovely Tony man. Sherman. Absolutely, I've worked with Tony. Tony's um, great, man. But I'll tell you who I love is just go down a little, scroll down a little bit, and uh, our boy Mike Lee. He's, he's looking really serious. He's, he's looking real happy. Stuff, he's Lee. stoked. Yeah. He's stoked to be a part of SMC 2019. Oh, he's oh, yeah. he's the guy who's going to be riding the Premier Bulls. He's that's pumped. right. He's, he's riding some Premier Bulls, and uh, you can you can see by the look on his face that he's stoked. Chad, how many times do you think the word "pumped" is going to be used at Stronger Men's Conference? Dude, at least twenty-five times in the first hour. Okay, so well, um, hold on. They, I bet they get nuanced because there's pumped, there's stoked, there's jacked, there's like. I bet jacked. they use the word jacked. That's this seems yeah. like a jacked crowd. Not, I mean, stoked is a little. That's that's a little old-fashioned for these guys because yeah. they're they're yeah. all hip and modern and wear V-neck T-shirts under blazers. Um, so I I bet they use the word jacked all the time. I'm so jacked to be here. All of yeah. them, all of them are jacked yeah. to be here, dude. I'm okay. jacked to be on this website, man. I mean, because it is just fan tabulous, man. Look at this thing. So, of all the guys on this website, like of all the guys that we've talked about, who do you think is most likely to be like low key embarrassed to be there? Mike Lee? Is it Mike Lee? Is it Anthony Sherman? Is it one of the speakers? Who's who's actually embarrassed to be a part of this thing? Mark Driscoll. <laughs> <laughs> this is baby. This is Drisky's thing, dude. No, I mean, I mean, come on, man, come on. Yeah. I think you have to be able to be embarrassed to be embarrassed to be here, and so I don't yeah. think it's Driscoll. <laughs> you don't think Driscoll is capable of embarrassment? I I think he might have seared those nerve endings at some point. That's what I'm Interesting. gathering. Interesting. Um, there there are Driscoll. other there are other NFL players like Chris Long is going to be there, and Whoa, Trey where Burton. are you seeing this pipe? It was showing up when I looked at the website the first time, and now it's like it's, it's like they reloaded the website since I since we started this show. It's like they're they're playing tricks on us, dude. See, all I see is Anthony Sherman under NFL superstars, right? But before uh, they showed a, a few different names, and uh, and so Chris Long and Trey Burton, who are who are wow. actual legitimate NFL players who have played at a Absolutely. very high level, which tells like that. I feel like they would be potentially mildly embarrassed, like if you've played in a Super Bowl. <laughs> Then showing up to the stronger men's conference, they're like, no, 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 I've I've actually played in a NFL conference of very strong men, and none of you qualify. So, dude, now now you guys have you guys have moved about in the world of speakers fees. Like, how much how much scratch do you think Trisky's throwing at Chris Long to get him to show up to this thing? Because I'm thinking he doesn't get off the couch for less than what 40, 50 G's. I bet it's less than that, but I bet there's a throw in for like, can you also, you know, promote whatever cause, charity, business, brand? Oh, sure. You know, so, so he's it's like attached, a trade off. Yeah, he's attached to like uh, one of those one of those groups that that drills wells in sub-Saharan Africa or raises money for this and that, and so that yeah. gets a significant promo. And so you know, it's it's like ten or fifteen grand plus that. Yeah. No, I dig it. That's I my dig guess. it. Yeah, that's probably what's happening for sure. Um, boys, just one day, like, just like the fee we would get, ma'am. I always say, Hey, I need X amount of dollars, but you just need to be promoing my podcast, you know, when I yeah. get there. I'll, that's I'll my charity, grand, or I'll do it for a hundred dollars and you can promo <laughs> the, the happy rant. Happy yeah. rant is my charity usually when I go to a speed, do a speaking gig, you know. Mm. And well, we, uh, we appreciate being the beneficiaries of your charity work, Ron. It's really Maybe paid off too, hasn't it? Let's yeah, get dude, an update on your charity money. Work. When yeah. is uh when is when is uh normal pastors? Are you getting are you getting jacked for that, baby? Are you got your outfit picked out? When <laughs> oh, is this yeah. happening? <clears throat> I'm getting so jacked. It's gonna be so jacked, man. Me and Thorny are just oh, gonna be yeah. jacked. We're gonna be getting jacked together on that one, man. It's gonna be the <laughs> you, You're gonna be getting so jacked. So when August. is this thing? Uh, August. Okay. Yeah. So outfit picked out yet? What are you wearing in normal yeah, pastors? Out, outfit picked out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. It's normal. Um, so I'm scared. I got to be careful. You know, I got to be mm. careful about what I wear. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to li limit your number of jackets, both because of time of year and because it's a normal pastor's conference. Well, I don't want to offend, yeah. you know, Jared C. I don't want to wear something that he would be like, dude, you know, you're going to, you're going to wear like man's, you know, men's clothing or what are you going to do, Ronnie? So I, I got to think through it. You guys can help when it gets closer to the event. Um, you guys can help me out with that. Yeah, we will, baby. It takes a village and lean on us. I mean, use I will, us. I will lean on you. Yeah, it takes a village to dress a to dress a church planner. So it takes a village to dress a normal pastor. You know, just a couple, just a normal guy, just a regular guy. You know, absolutely. Uh, 
you know. That's, and uh, again, you know, Thorny's going to be there with his tats and his beard. So I mean, I do yeah. have a little. Well, now, I do the, have a fighting chance. And you know? well, here's the mm-hmm. thing: he's got that, and he's 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 going to be wearing like some sort of graphic T-shirt that has like a skull and says Baptist 1689 or something yeah, on it. For so sure. it's going to be some yeah. righteous red. So thing which and, means you can literally wear anything because if he makes fun of you, be like, look at yourself. Like, just look yeah. at you. And uh, I'm going to try to look as ambiguous as possible, boys. That's and, my plan. And Jared, Jared C. always dresses like he's he's center cut all the way. So it's like mm-hmm. kind of your average collared shirt. If it's, you know, he'll he'll wear like a jacket, maybe one of those sort of like canvas kind of jackets over something. But oh, yeah. He's never he's never trying to make a statement. Jared C.'s going to look like a lovely man. Yeah. I mean, just, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, know? super lovely guy, really pleasant. Just Absolutely. He's, he's sort of center cut, safe all the way. Really what this means is you, you get to just be yourself. So you can wear like nine nine jackets if you want to, and you'll be just fine. <laughs> yeah, nine jackets, Chuck Taylors. Yep. Um, or boots. Out. You won't look like Thorny or or um, or Jared C. Um, baby, who else is on the on the docket for that one? Who are you headlining with? You know, I don't I don't really know. I don't really know all the all the. I know Thorny, and I know I know Jared C. And. Uh, I don't know the I don't know the other guys. Dude, now didn't Thorny go through quite a like a, a persona shift? I don't know five six years ago. Wasn't he like khakis and golf shirt, and then he decided like I'm going to be tattoos and beard guy, and and there was a big shift? Or am I thinking of somebody else? Uh, I don't know, man. There may have been like a there may have been a total transformation there because I because mm-hmm. I I saw on social, man. I saw like I saw old school Thorny without the beard, and it yeah. was like it was literally like wait who. Who yeah, he yeah. he right looks. Now. If you see pictures of him pre beard, it's very hard to tell the difference between like his seventh grade photo and like when he started pastoring. They it's the same person. So he's a classic case of I grow the beard so I don't look like I'm nine. Does uh, does he have a podcast or something? He does. Did I hear something about that? <laughs> yeah. What's it called? It's called Doctrine and Devotion. Oh, uh, is it is it popular? It is quite. They do they do well for themselves. They even have do a whole conference that they've done. That they do oh, annually. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they don't go live like us. They do conferences. Okay. But I mean, it's like well, a, it's like a, a full on, it's a full on theology conference. Oh, yeah, it's okay. hardcore. They're like hardcore reformed big T. I mean, they're like yeah. they kind of took over for they kind of took over for like reform podcast. Let's be honest, man. Dude, reform pub is done. They're they're not doing anything anymore. I don't think so. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder what. But I mean, happens. they're like they're like serious as well. Like a thorny serious man, right? Like yeah, sure, podcast. sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're not having laughs and, and no, 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 no. Well, he, we don't know on their either. podcast. He and his co-host are they, they have they have like a nice banter repartee. They're funny dudes, sure. but the topics they take on are like the topics aren't funny, right? They, yeah, they're I mean. they're heavy church stuff, heavy theology stuff. So they're funny people, but not yeah. not funny topics. Yeah, every funny topic is like, hey, let's chat about total depravity again because that's cool, and you yeah, know, that's kind of the, that's kind of the angle they take. There yeah. you go. There you all go. All good stuff. All good stuff. Baby, I want to know what happened to Reform Pub. I don't know what happened to Reform Pub, man. We uh, it joined together a couple of people at our church that got married that I married last year. Wow, and uh, that's the last I've heard of Reform Pub, man. A podcast I mean, I, marriage. That's exciting. <laughs> it was a it was a total podcast marriage. In fact, I made them like like do all the nuptials like into like a microphone, like it was a podcast. I mean, it was baby. So we, let me let me let me level with you, okay? Yeah. Uh, I want to harken back to something that we talked about a long time ago. It was an idea that I dropped on you boys. It was a business idea. And it, it kind of it kind of was met with a tepid response. I'm not going to lie. But my business idea was leveraging our audience uh, here at the Happy Rant to, to start like a Happy Rant like dating app where oh, wow. like listeners to the Happy Rant can <laughs> connect with one another because – what, what we've done is like we've really segmented a nice little audience of like people with good theology who can laugh. And um, these are the kind of people like they want to meet each other. Uh, and I feel like we're just like an app developer away from having like an incredible thing. And, uh, you know, I threw it out there. And, and you know what? I was a little I was a little hurt by the response. We disappointed, baby. That was our fault. Maybe I was I a think, little disappointed. And I, didn't I think we were just I think we were just going through some things at that time. And so we couldn't respond in the way that we needed to respond to you. I think I think Pipe had some stuff in his life. And, uh, you know, and well, I'm baby, just, I'm listening. And, I'm and if you want to respond now, you can do that. Baby, so, I think I think you I think you brought up something a minute ago when you when you said you you brought up this tagline that I thought was kind of on the brill side of things, which was okay. people with good theology who know how to laugh. Oh, and I think I, love that. Yeah, I think there's some, yeah. I think there's something we can do with that. That's can, can we get like a subtitle on that that says and aren't weirdos? Yeah, yeah I mean, sure. 
Yeah, I don't I mean, know. If that I don't. Works. I feel like <laughs> there there needs to be an extra layer of like how, exactly how strange are you? Yeah, boys, you I love this energy. I just love business time. ideas. So we're ki- we're kicking this thing around. What do we need right now, Piper? Do we need an investor? Do we need somebody to develop this app for us? Do we just need like yes um, and yes? I think the term is angel investor. Um, okay. I think that's even come up on one of our previous entrepreneurial episodes. It Piper, basically means somebody who will right cut now? us a big fat check. Why don't we even have an app, though? Is it weird that we don't have an app? Not just for a podcast, because podcasts are distributed you know, through a billion different apps. I think if we're trying to provide other content services, or in this case, a dating app, um, I, Ted, let me, let me, full disclosure, as yeah. uh, my, my tepid response to this has everything yeah. to do with the fact that uh, I tend to be mildly <laughs> skeptical about married people's um, suggestions on on dating methodology. <laughs> yeah, well, you know that that's fine. I, and, I mean, that's not a shot at you yeah. personally. That is a yeah. that that may that might just be something I need to work through. It might just be well, something I need to deal with. But that's a thing. That's, that's what uh, I was trying to say. You're working through your own stuff right it, now. It has well, there, listen, there's I, some pieces. I, there's some there's some things in me that just sort of they sort of cringe a little bit when I when I hear certain. People in a certain marital status talk about things like, I don't know, dating apps, for example. Let me just say, I appreciate your soft heart in that. And, um, <laughs> and I, I appreciate the way you said it. Um, let, me, let me tell you boys a little bit about the genesis of this idea. So uh, we, were, we were out to lunch some time ago with, um, with a, a single lady at our church who's a huge rant fan. And um, we were talking about how... You know, it was it was kind of the typical like there's no decent guys, blah blah blah, that that whole thing, and um, and and she was describing what she wanted. She was like, I want a guy who like loves the church and has good theology, but you know, is funny, knows and how to laugh, humor, knows how to laugh. And I'm like, what you're describing is a happy rant listener. Like that's what you want. And she's like, yes, that's exactly what I want. And um, I was like, great, let me make some calls, you know, give me two weeks, we'll have this app up and you'll probably be, you know, married in six months. But um, that's when I dropped the idea on you guys and it never happened. And And she's still single and you feel like guilt right now, baby. And and baby, listen, nobody's pointing. You feel like this one's on you. I feel like this one's on me kind of, you know, I feel like I didn't pull my weight. I didn't do my job. And um, I'm just putting it out there again, boys. I'm just floating the idea out. Um, Let's, let's. Let's see where it goes. Let's see if we get any angel investors reaching out. Let's see if we have any app developers out there in our listenership um, who can help us put this thing together. Uh, because I think it's a it's a beautiful idea. There could be some beautiful relationships that grow out of it. And, um, it, but Piper, I hear your criticism. I, I do. It's and, it's a uh, it's not a about. criticism because you didn't do yeah. anything wrong. It is a <laughs> it, let's call it a hang up. It's more it's okay. much it's much more on my side than your side. You, okay. you came with a, a justifiable, well-reasoned, well-explained idea that could really benefit people, and, and I have some hang-ups. Ted, it's not you, it's him. That's exactly right. It's not you, <laughs> it's me. I don't think this thing is going to work out. Boys, that's okay. And um, you know what? Not every business idea is, um, is, is one that we can all three get on board with right away, but I'm not going to lie, guys. I think there could be some nice money in this for us, okay? I, I don't know how the financials break down, but like- what what if we got a piece of the action for every every wedding like every marriage we get like a we get a little I, okay quick quick cu- another cautionary statement if you're talking about dating apps please don't use the phrase piece of the action because <laughs> that, that means something entirely different in that world just that's true another that's another true. caution for the married guy oh well, this no, thing just I, keeps <laughs> deflating I descending. Know. I know, much like this episode, Vigar. Pretty much, like, yeah. Which very I feel similar. Like none of us were were really on board with doing at all. Like I, I, I sensed that, like uh, from from yeah. word one, from the from the word go today, like this episode was was kind yeah, of yeah. They could have heard our pre-show prep. It was like, boys, can can we just maybe not do this, or if we have to, let's make it short. And then inevitably we do it. It's not short, and here we are at the end, just fighting, fighting for ideas. Fighting. Maybe let's let's do make it short though. Let's uh, let's let's mercifully call it into this thing, and um, I, I'm I'm saying that in part because I accidentally like xed out of my uh, my recording. Um, <laughs> so so resonate, guys. If you're listening, the recording on my end is going to be it's going to leave a little bit to be desired, and by that I mean the last three minutes or so. And um, and also another thing that I've just realized, boys, is that um, 
I never plugged in my my podcasting microphone. So. I, I did wonder why the audio sounded that's like it was a little really, echoey, but that's you know, been really bad for four. Yeah, years. that's why it's been really bad. It's also because my office is being painted, so there's like there's no carpets down in here, and the, and all the stuff is off the it's walls. Quality just, control every time, personality plus, and quality control all day long, baby, all day long. Well, this has been uh, probably the worst disaster. episode of the Happy Rant we've done in a long, long time. It's been a real apologize, disaster. Apologize, apologize to our listeners, real quick. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just really sorry for this whole thing. It, it just hasn't been good. The topics were mediocre. Our level of enthusiasm and buy-in was mediocre. And what's more, my audio quality was mediocre. So um, that's that's what we brought to the table today, boys. Any parting shots before we go? I would just, uh, I would just like to say that that uh, this is all because we've invested a hundred percent of our effort into <clears throat> into preparation for Indie Live. So our, our this is this is like the letdown episode. Yes, we're recording it beforehand, but you're gonna hear it afterwards. So just think of this as like this is like the hangover from Indie Live. Ab- absolutely, this is like when an NBA team rests like half of its players. Um, because it's getting it's ready like for what Ron feels like on a Monday after preaching 11 sermons at his nine campuses or whatever they have now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this, that's, mm-hmm. that's what's happening. It's just a bad guys. It's just a bad sermon. Everybody has a bad sermon. It's no, Ron bad. has nine micro campuses. They're like just people's homes. We do like micro church. Shows. We yeah, do micro like church. T- it's tiny, it's tiny church. It's like tiny everybody. I'm, church. I'm, I'm, that's right. I'm, I'm preaching at the <laughs> Instead of you guys, instead of all hundred of you coming to one location, let me go preach ten different locations for ten people each. I'm preaching at the Altrogis this morning. Absolutely. And then, and then after that, a half hour later, I'll be I'll be down the street at someone just else's have a, home. Just have a nice breakfast item of my choice waiting for me, and I'll I'll just throw out another sermon. Piece Baby, of I love micro church. I love this model for you. For me as well. This is huge. I love oh, this model big. for you. It's big. Yeah. It's, it's big. So it's the new. Big. It's the new missional model. See, you know what? We talk for forty-five minutes, and, and finally we get to something good. But boys, I'm gonna I'm gonna call a merciful end to this episode. Uh, I'm gonna say that we've wandered to and fro throughout these just wildly mediocre topics. And until next time, Rachel the Held Evans. The Happy Rant is brought to you by Resonate Recordings. If you go to resonaterecordings.com, you can see the full range of services they offer. So if you're considering starting a podcast, they are the ones we recommend going with. Again, go to resonaterecordings.com to see their prices, to connect with them and ask any questions, and to see what they can do to help you launch, edit, master, and improve your podcast. Again, go to resonaterecordings.com to see what they can do to help you launch and improve your podcast.